Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad that you're there because that means we get to spend some time together. And what we're going to talk about now is why you can't sleep through the night. How many people can't sleep through the night? Raise your hands. A lot of you do. I know. And, and Joe, of course, my, my, my associate here, uh, I said that before the show. I said, yeah, well, why can't you sleep through the night? He goes, it's my four-year-old. Well, that certainly is something that could prevent you from sleeping through the night. However, I can't fix that one. But the other ones we're going to talk about, <clears throat> chances are I have a pretty good answer for you. And sleep is really important. I've done a lot of shows on sleep over the years uh, because it's something we all do. It's a third of our lives in a, in a perfect world. And eating is something we do three times a day. And pain management is something we have every single day. So my show is really easy to do because there's a lot of hot topics that we all have to deal with. And that's why it's so much fun doing the show. And that's why every show we try to give you some new information. So sleep is vital. And as, and as a pain management expert, my team of doctors and I, we're really good in people with pain management. And not getting just pain managed, but also getting to the cause of the pain not just treating the symptoms. And my team of doctors, I'm so proud of every one of them. Uh, and they're all my doctors. So if I don't trust them taking care of me and taking care of Joe, my associate, I don't trust you, trust them taking care of you. So you're in really good hands when you come see us, in my opinion. So sleep is important because that's when the body heals. And if you're not giving your body a good night's sleep, the body can't heal. And so you're not going to get all the results, whether it's chiropractic care, medical care, chemotherapy, whatever treatment you're doing, Sleep is going to be the one commonality that we all need to get the body to heal the best it possibly can. So you need to do everything we can to make it through the night. And if you shortchange on shut eye, you might get moody, cranky, anxious, depressed, but you also find it harder uh, to remember things, to drive. I was just driving through a Home Depot parking lot yesterday, and I was driving, and a lady just pulled out of a parking space and, and right in front of me, and I almost hit her, and I slammed on her brakes. And she, she saw me as I, I beat my horn, and she turned and looked at me, and I was staring her right in the face. And she just looked so tired. And I thought, had I not been awake, we would have had a collision. I would have hit her right on the driver's side, going you know relatively quickly. So sleep is important not just for your health, but for my health. I want to make sure that you're not dopey and out there driving and hurting me or someone I care about. So if you're not sleeping right, it can lead to obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. So it's really important that we try to figure out why you're not making it through the night. And if we can do that, I'm going to be your new best friend. And whoever sleeps next to you, I'm going to be their new best friend too. So one of them, of course, is major life events. It's normal for something unusually stressful like a recent car accident, losing your job. Uh, that can cause you to wake up in the middle of the night. We've all had, well, I hope you haven't, but most people have had some very traumatic times in their lives. And of course, that's going to affect your sleep, which is going to affect your judgment, and it's going to go all the way around. So when you have a, 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 tr a traumatic segment of your life, I always look at life as a book, and the pages are always going to turn. There's going to be a next page coming up, I hope. And when the page turns, whatever it is, that kind of goes away. But when you're going through it, it stinks. So the side effects uh, from a trauma usually fade over time. If you can't, I do recommend therapy. I am a huge fan of going to psychological therapy. I think it's really important if you don't have a friend you can talk to, or if the friend isn't enough, going seek professional help. And I think that's a major part of everyone's life. And I've always said that the things we don't teach in school, if I was Grand Poobah of all the school universe, it would be how to make money, how to have a relationship, how to deal with stress, and how to be healthy. And those are the things we just don't teach. And when I say relationship, not necessarily boy-girl or girl-boy or whatever your options are, uh, what about a relationship with the people you work with? What about a relationship with people you just run into in the grocery store? What about a relationship with your family, your children? So it's important that you learn the guidelines. And, and there's a great book, by the way. It's called The Five Love Languages. If you've never read it, I don't have anything to do with it. I think it's a great book, though. And if you have somebody you're working with, find out what their love language is. And if you do, it's going to take a lot of stress off your life. So if your love language is words of affirmation, you like to be praised, and you, you keep giving that person gifts. Well, gifts may not be up on their top love. It's only five love languages. They're easy to figure out. Um, you're going to go, God, I give her everything she wants or him everything they, they want. Why am I not getting a response? Well, that's not their love language. All you have to say is, you know what, Joe? You did a great job today. Awesome job today. And that f f fills the love language. And it's important to figure it out even with kids too. So anyway, I digress. 
But if you're having a traumatic time in your life, it's a good idea if, the, if there's someone you could work, if it's a person that's causing it, to figure out how to communicate better. And that's why I think uh, counseling is just so valuable. So we all have issues. We all have, not everybody likes you. You don't have to have everybody like you. That's okay. Um, periodically, someone's not going to like you. And it just is what it is. You can't make everybody happy. Uh, what was it the other day? Uh, somebody's complaining about the on hold music at our office. And it's my voice. I'm just giving you little health tips and stuff. And they're complaining about that. And I was like, you're calling my office. Well, what are you complaining about? People want health tips. So very strange. There's a lot of odd, oddballs in the world. But major life events... Time will time usually heals all wounds, but if it's not, you might want to get some help. Uh, we worry about things. Did I pay the power bill? Did I pay my property taxes? Is it, do I have to carpool tomorrow? Am I driving the kids? Uh, one of the things that I do, because I got a lot of things going on in this little brain of mine, is I write things down. I have sticky notes, and if you know me, you know this. I have sticky notes all over the place. I have them in my office. I have them right here in front of me. I have them uh, in my car. In my bedroom, I wake up, woke up last night, as a matter of fact, and I had a thought, oh, I got to remember to reach out to this person. And I scribbled it down, stuck it up, and, and I have them with the stickiness all the way across the back, stuck it to my nightstand. And luckily, I was able to read it this morning. Some mornings I wake up and I, I have no idea what I wrote. I have the worst handwriting in the world to begin with, and this doesn't make it any better. But journaling is really valuable. Sit down and write down how you're feeling. Nobody even has to read it. You can throw it away when you're done. But write down how you're feeling, and I think you're going to do real well with getting a lot of life's worries out of the way. And then when I wake up in the morning, I look at my list of things to do. I take it into the office. I go through my list. On my desk, I probably have about 10 or 15 sticky notes. Some of them need immediate attention. Some of them are long-term. It's going to help a lot, and it's going to help you sleep a lot better. Uh, the room you're sleeping in could be an issue. Too hot, too cold, too stuffy, uh, not dark enough. So an ideal situation for most people, about 72 degrees, maybe 68 degrees. Uh, some people like to bundle themselves up even in the summer. And uh, that, that's, if that's how you sleep, that's how you sleep. You got to crank the air conditioner up and then bundle yourself up to stay warm. Uh, I like sleeping with a fan on. So find out what works best for you. Some people sleep better with socks. Some people sleep barefoot. But try to find out what's working for you. Maybe you have a stuffy nose. Well, if you have a stuffy nose, the easiest thing you can do is cut out wheat and dairy products. Wheat and dairy products cause sinus congestion. So here's my challenge to you. I want you to cut out all wheat and all dairy products for two weeks, 14 days. Not a bite, not a nibble, nothing. No wheat, no dairy, two, day, two weeks. See how you feel. See if you're breathing better. See if you're sleeping better. See if you go to the bathroom better. See if you have more energy. At the end of two weeks, go back to eating wheat and dairy products. See how you feel. If I'm right, and I am, you'll say, now I get it. I couldn't sleep all those years because I couldn't breathe because my nose was stuffy because I was eating a cheese sandwich before I went to bed. And sometimes, many times, a lot of health issues you have are that easy. And the biggest complaint I get, I've been doing this for 37 years, biggest complaint I get is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I take your advice sooner, Dr. Joe? Why didn't I learn about you sooner? So if you like what you're hearing, go to our website, drjoe.com. We have over 2,000 podcasts, hours of podcasts on the website, video and audio. Depends how you learn, video or audio. If, you have a, if you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it is our podcast service, is our podcast out there in the podcast uh, services. And so you can listen to hundreds and hundreds of hours of podcasts. If you have a question, Send it, through, through, send it to me through the website, drjoe.com. You see a little bot that pops up. Type in your question. We try to get back to you immediately. Joe and I are the ones answering questions. If we don't get back to you right away, it's okay. We're going to get back to you, okay? If you don't hear from us in a day or two, maybe some, there was a glitch somewhere. You can always call the office. The number's all over the website. You can call the office, and we're more than happy to answer questions for you about health, okay? Some things I don't address. I'll tell you, listen, that's out of my ballpark. I don't address that, but I'll try to do everything I can to help you get well. So drjoe.com, great source of information, great source of podcasts, all the supplements I talk about, Super Green, Essential Source. Uh, those are all on the website, drjoe.com as well. And we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb in the Atlanta area. I know this podcast goes all over the world, but we're in the Atlanta area and we would love the opportunity to be your doctor. 
So if you have a health problem, we'd love to come. If, you, if we can't help you, we'll say, listen, this is out of our ballpark. Let's go ahead and refer you out. So we'd love to work with you, drjoe.com. Anyway, 68, 72 degrees. Most people sleep really well. Uh, you want to make it dark because if not, if light gets in your eyes, uh, like if you sleep with the TV on, if you sleep with your phone next to you and the phone doesn't go black, don't sleep with your phone next to you, by the way, because that creates what's called electromagnetic frequencies. So many people can't sleep because of electromagnetic frequencies. I take their phone. I tell them to put it on the other side of the room or in another room. That night, they sleep fine. So you don't even know it. It's these magical, mystical, invisible waves flying through the phone, flying through the air that can keep people awake. So strongly advise you'd never put your phone next to your bed when you're sleeping. Please get it away from the bed as far as you can. I put mine on the other side of the room. It's about 10, 12 feet away. And then my alarm goes off. I got to get up and shut the phone off too. And it gets me out of bed. So just another trick. But as dark as you can get your room, if you can't get it dark, uh, what you want to do is just buy one of those little uh, $5 masks. You get them at a drugstore and that'll block the light out. Because if light gets in, it shuts down your production of melatonin. And melatonin is the, no the hormone, actually, that helps you sleep. So make it dark. You'll feel a lot better. If you drink alcohol, not a good idea. It may make you sleepy at first, but drinking can wake you up right pretty soon afterwards, sometimes repeatedly. So it, it disrupts an important uh, part of your brain and that goes into what's called REM stage sleep, not the band from Athens, Georgia, REM, rapid eye movement. Don't know if they call themselves that for that reason. I have no idea. And that can interfere uh, with a lot of things, including your breathing. And if you're not breathing properly, you wake up. If you have to wake up and pee, that's an issue. Now, I've talked about this before. If you got to get up and pee a lot during the night, think about how much you're drinking right before you go to bed. And in many cases, you're just drinking too much. So I stopped drinking a lot of fluids around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then by the time I go to bed around 10, I, I'm, I'm okay. I can make it through the night without having to get up and pee. Now, the other night, uh, I had some uh, spectacular uh, Malaysian food. It's called curry sayor. If anybody has a good recipe for curry sayor, please send it to me. But uh, I had curry sayor, and it's a very soupy vegetable kind of stew thing. And um, that was an issue. It's a lot of fluid right before I went to bed. So uh, think about what you're eating, and that certainly could have an effect on your bladder. Now, as we get older, it's harder to hold your bladder. If you remember you were a kid, you drink, I don't know, whatever, two or three big glasses of water before you go to bed, sleep 12 hours, wake up and pee for a, well, it seems like a half hour. Well, we don't have those strong bladders like we used to as you get older. And so you may have to alter how much liquid you're putting in your body. Alcohol, of course, uh, affects every aspect of your body. I'm not a fan of alcohol. I wish you wouldn't drink. If you do drink, here's my rule. For every drink you have, you have to have three glasses of water. Now, if you're drinking at night, that can certainly affect you waking up. But alcohol shuts down the production of something in your brain called antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Antidiuretic hormone prevents you from just continually peeing. It holds urine and fluid in your body. Alcohol shuts down the production of antidiuretic hormone so that then you pee a lot. And the reasoning, we believe, is that the body knows that alcohol is so toxic, it has to flush it out of the systems. We did a show on kidney issues, and that will be on the website, drjoe.com. But we're flushing, this, uh, they're flushing the alcohol out of the system, and so you have to pee a lot more. But I want you to flush the alcohol out of the system because it's toxic to the brain. Now, I'm very concerned about your brain function because the brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the spleen, the liver, everything is controlled by nerves. And if you have a pinched nerve, that can block the messages from getting to where they're supposed to go, partially, but we can also affect it chemically. Alcohol affects the brain. And the brain controls everything and it kills brain cells. I don't want you killing brain cells. So if you drink, you probably should stop. If you do drink, three glasses of water for every alcoholic drink you have, and that's going to make you pee so much that you won't be drinking so much. See, it's part of my master plan here. Caffeine does a similar thing. Caffe caffeine is a diuretic. And so if you drink a lot of caffeine, that'll make you pee. But it also has ca uh, caffeine in it, which, of course, keeps you awake, and that's not good. So some people, which amazes me, can drink a cup of coffee at night and sleep through the night. I am blown away. I don't know how they do it. I have a sip of caffeine and I'm up for like four days. So avoid it in the afternoon, in the evening, especially. Even if you are getting to sleep, you may not be getting into the deep sleep. 
because the caffeine can be having an adverse effect on you on what we call a subclinical level. Clinical means you know about it. Subclinical means it's affecting you. You just don't know it. So just consider that. Uh, if you're drinking caffeine and having trouble sleeping, you might want to not drink caffeine or certainly just drink it in the morning. Give the body a chance to detoxify that out of the system. If you eat too much at night, that can be a problem, not only from the chemical standpoint of too much food, but the physical standpoint. And I talk about this a lot in almost every show. Your stomach sits below your diaphragm. And if you eat a big meal, the stomach can be pushing up against the diaphragm. Now, if you're sitting up or standing, you have gravity, gravity assist, it's pulling it down. If you lay down after eating a big meal, the stomach can push up against the diaphragm and the diaphragm is unable now to drop down and that's how you breathe. The diaphragm drops down, you suck air in. Diaphragm moves up, you blow air out. And so if the diaphragm can't move freely, that can affect sleeping because you're just not breathing properly. And many times you'll hear people <laughs> gasp for air. A lot of times it's because the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. My team of doctors, and I've trained them to do this, it, can, we can adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when the stomach is pulled down away from the diaphragm, that takes the stress off the diaphragm and also relaxes your stomach. And your stomach has essentially one important job. And that job is to take proteins, whether that protein is from a steak or a carrot or celery, unravel them, chop them up into something called amino acids. The amino acid named tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain, which makes you happy. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. So many times when you have a sleep issue, the stomach is physically in the wrong place. And we need to physically pull it down away from the diaphragm so that you can digest your proteins. Tryptophan becomes serotonin. Serotonin becomes melatonin. And you're able to sleep. And by doing that, we allow the diaphragm to move up and down more freely so you can breathe better. And you're digesting your food and your nutrients better so you can absorb a lot more nutrition. The brain's going to work more efficiently. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, you probably need to come see us. And let's see if it is what I just described. It may not be. And if it is, maybe we can set up a protocol to pull that down away from the diaphragm. If you come and see us, we're also going to check the nerve supply to the stomach. Because we can pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm all day, but if you have a pinched nerve going to the stomach, it ain't going to work right. And so that's why we want to fix everything when a patient comes in. You may have a pinched nerve in your neck. And that can affect the diaphragm. Because the fourth cervical nerve, the fourth nerve down is called the phrenic nerve. It's the source of the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve controls your diaphragm. So if you have a pinched nerve, the brain may not be telling the diaphragm how to move properly, and that can be an issue. And if you've ever worked with someone who broke their neck, if it's below the fourth cervical vertebrae, they don't have to be on a ventilator. They can still breathe on their own. If the fracture is above the fourth cervical, many times they have to be on a ventilator because the brain can't tell the phrenic nerve to tell the diaphragm to move, and that's why people are on ventilators. So the phrenic nerve is really important. It's oftentimes ignored. And you can pinch a phrenic nerve. It may not work as well as it should, but it's still working. So you don't know it's there. So that's why if you do have neck pain or back pain or shoulder pain or numbness or tingling or headaches or sciatica, folks, just come see us. I cannot understand why any of you right now that have a health issue haven't come seen us yet. And every day patients come in. Dr. Joe, I've been listening to you for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You're amazing. You're probably the smartest man I've ever met. I hear this multiple times a day. Then what took you so long to get in here? I don't know. So stop waiting. Stop suffering. Go to the website, drjoe.com. You can make an appointment. On the first visit, we do a chiropractic examination, a consultation, evaluation, x-rays, uh, examination, first chiropractic adjustment. On the second visit, we go over your nutrition evaluation with you, give you a whole nutrition protocol, and we go over your x-rays with you. And then we put together a plan for you. And then we'll say, this is what it's going to take. My staff will come in, talk about if you have insurance, what your insurance covers. If you don't have insurance, we have so many different ways for you to get the care here. It's, it's so inexpensive too. So I can't imagine why you're not doing it. But you can book an appointment right online, drjoe.com. If we do everything we just talked about, it's right around $700. We've reduced that to $299. So it's a very small investment on your part to maybe make some dramatic life changes that you're going to thank yourself for decades to come. I hope. Can't promise or guarantee anything, but most patients are pretty happy. 
So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. You can book it right online. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. All over the page. Book an appointment. Book a consultation. Ready to book? How about now? So, and still people say, well, I can't find a way to book an appointment. So it's halfway down the main page. It's up on the top. It's down at the bottom. It's everywhere. So just book an appointment. As soon as you book it, my staff will call you. Not right away, but I mean, relatively short period of time. Discuss with you your insurance options. You decide what office you want to go to. You can book that right online too. So stop suffering. Well, I don't know what you're waiting for. I cannot comprehend. If I'm in pain, I want to get out of pain as quickly as possible. I don't want to suffer with it. So go to the website, book an appointment. We're happy to work with you. And again, if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, happy to do that as well. Medications can prevent you from sleeping. Things like pseudoephedra found in a lot of over-the-counter decongestants can interrupt your sleep. So we just said, if you have congestion, what should you do? Cut out the wheat and the dairy. Maybe we need to adjust your stomach. And let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, you can always take pseudoephedrine, but I'd much rather fix the cause and not just treat the symptoms. Allergy medication, heart medication, hypertension, tension deficit disorder, Parkinson's, little blue pills. Uh, these things can all affect your sleep patterns. And so pain, of course, is one of the big reasons that people can't sleep. And if you have pain, my team of doctors and I are really good at helping you get out of pain and then helping you go to sleep. So again, you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We kind of brushed on anxiety, depression already. That's a big issue. Many times that's due to the digestive system, the stomach not breaking down proteins into amino acids. We talked about that with melatonin, but tryptophan becomes serotonin, which helps you be happy. Many times when there's anxiety, depression is not enough serotonin. So by fixing the stomach and getting you on a good diet and getting the nutrients in your body, in many cases, the depression now is manageable and many times it just goes away. So again, a natural approach. Don't come off your medication. Keep taking your medication. Let us work with you to get you well enough so you don't need the medication. That's a big issue. Uh, menopause can certainly affect women's uh, sleep. Uh, as you get older, you might get hot flashes. Adrenaline gets in the body, um, and that can give you a rush. When you're during childbearing years, your body produces a lot of estrogen. Estrogen goes into the hypothalamus in the brain and tell, it regulates temperature. As you get older the hypothalamus is not getting the estrogen. So sometimes it goes crazy. There's no, nobody controlling the thermostat. And so that's why many times we get you on a good diet and a good plant-based diet, we can put something in the body called phytoestrogens, which are plant estrogens, and they help regulate the hypothalamus for temperature. So again, not always, but that could be something that we want to work with as well. Uh, exercising before going to bed. Uh, I can't. I used to play hockey uh, back in my 30s, and we'd have games sometimes 10 o'clock at night. 9, 10 o'clock at night. So we'd play for a couple of hours skating really hard. I'd come home at night. I was wide awake. I'd sit in a cold bathtub just to calm down. It's usually in the summer we had games. And it took a lot of work to get me tired because I exercised. Then, of course, the next day I was tired. So start thinking about your, your lifestyle patterns and see if there's something you need to change. So, folks, I'm almost out of time. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. Joe and I are more than happy to answer your questions for you. Uh, if you want to make an appointment, which, by the way, I think you should, you can book it right online, drjoe.com. Uh, the supplements, again, the minimum supplements I think everybody should be taking, the starter, so, starter kit would be Super Greens and Essential Source. I also recommend vitamin D because vitamin D is so important for the immune system. It's good for bone health. It's good for brain health. If you're not out in the sun 10, 15 minutes a day, I take five drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D. I take digestive enzymes when I eat cooked meals. So... I've put together a pretty good lifestyle, and it's worked real well for me, and I'd love to share all that with you. So I'd love to have you make an appointment, drjoe.com. Again, any questions, send them to me through the website. Follow us on social media at Dr. Joe Esposito. We post almost every day. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com.